All right, guys, welcome back to part two of this wedding where we take care of portraits and reception. Here are some of the photos that you'll see throughout the day here and how I take them and, and where I place the people, why I place them there. I'll go through that, but I'm sure that I'm going to miss something. So be sure to tell me uh, or ask me any questions that you have. So let me tell you a little bit of what happened on this day. We were at the mission, at the San Fernando mission, and they told us we had until 4.30. It turned out that we didn't have until 4.30. By 3.45 p.m., they were kicking us out already, saying they had to close up. So we had to improvise, took a few shots there, but mostly took them at the Blum Green Ranch, which is awesome. Good. Ali, look at me. Whisper into her ear, dude. Tell her how beautiful she is. Whisper, but so hard to stay and rest in one place. Yeah, not that close to her ear, right there. Tell her how lucky you are, dude. There you go. Good, look at each other. Good, go for a tiny peck. There we go. Alejandro, look my way. Peck her in the cheek. There we go. In some of the GoPro footage, you'll see that I brought my softbox, but I didn't even finish setting it up because the light here was so beautiful. The, the sun is coming from behind them. I always want to play somebody with the sun behind them. Preferably, I want the background to be pleasing the way this background is with a bunch of leaves and trees that makes for that out of focus area to look super nice. If it was just sky, it might be blown out and then I would be forced to use flash so that it's not blown out. I prefer this natural look. I know a lot of people I talk to prefer the natural look. I use flash too though, don't get me wrong. I just use it in such a way that it looks natural. But here I don't need flash. Look that way. When I tell you to, I want you to to look at me, okay? One, two, three, and smile. There we go. Now look at Aldemar. There we go. Good, look at the flowers. So this portion of the day is the portrait portion. So I use either one of two lenses. Either I use the 85 millimeter 1.8 lens or I use the uh, 70 to 200 2.8 lens. Even though the 70 to 200 is much larger and heavier, I feel like I can get way more photos super quick. I mean like quick. If I have a few minutes with the bride, I can get lots of pictures. Standing in one position, zooming in and out. Of course, I don't just stand in one position. I move around a lot, but being able to zoom in and out and staying far away at 2.8 gives you that super out of, out of focus compression in the shots and I love it. So here we had a few minutes to go into the venue and not only take detail shots, but also set up all the lights and basically get ready for the rest of the evening. At the same time, we are trying to do this super quickly because you're trying to get some food and because you want to go out and take some more shots, or at least I do. So this is what we did. We take the details and then we went out to get more shots here. So the sun was setting, it had pleasing light, and I didn't eat my softbox yet again, although I did end up using it for a few shots. But this looks super nice. You basically direct them to do something, like here we had them dancing, and you get these really nice, natural, candid shots. Well, not candid, but you're telling them to do something, but you know what I mean, it just looks super natural. Okay, so this is it right here. This is the part where it separates a lot of people and shows if they know what they're doing, really, in my opinion. This is a really tricky situation here. I mean, super tricky. You should know that I asked the DJ to turn off those obnoxious yellow, green, blue, I hate those lights. I hate them. I asked him to turn it off because it just won't look 
the best in pictures if you don't know what you're doing and even if you do know what you're doing it's still very tricky so I asked DJ uh, I didn't ask him to turn it off right away, I asked him to turn it off once he said he couldn't turn the lights white. If the lights were just white lights, then that's awesome, I can use those as rim lights and it would be great. But instead I had to deal with them. So how do you deal with them? Well I'll explain that in just a bit, but check it out. I have uh, off camera flash, that's one right there, you can kind of see it there. I also have a second one to the left hand side which you'll see in a second but that's how the first one gives you what it gives you the light that little rim light there that's what my first off-camera flash gives you that's the second one it's on the other side uh, so pretty soon right now you'll see what that one gives you and it gives you a nice little rim light opposite side so then how do you light them up from the front well that's why I have a, a third light that kind of roams around wherever I go it's slightly to my right maybe not slightly it's 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 maybe five feet from me to the right shooting at an angle so you get a nice directional light as opposed to this harsh uh, light that's coming straight from your camera. If you've ever seen a photographer with a flash on top of their camera, they're probably bouncing the light, but to me the bounce light is inconsistent. I, I want to know it's coming from somewhere and I know it's coming with a certain power because I'm placing the power. So I'll point this out. I hate this shot, but I love it too, but why do I hate it? I mean, I'm pointing at the people that make it so that I hate this shot. That's the coordinator. I don't like that she's there. That's the DJ over there. I don't like that he's there. I mean, they could move. Maybe not the DJ, but other people could move. You know what I mean? I'll just say this once, but yeah, I, I really hated that. And I felt like maybe they should have known better. And I didn't have time to tell them to move because I didn't think they were gonna be there. I, you know, I'm taking the shots and it's happening and I see them up there and I can't stop shooting to tell them to move. And for the rest of the night, the DJs at least, they didn't move. I actually don't even know if they're DJs. I don't know what they are, they're the DJ's assistants. Anyways, so step one, close your aperture down and take a photo with no flash until you get a look that you like. That's how you you control your light. So close down the aperture, maybe like F4, or lower your ISOs, one of those. Get a shot, check how it looks. Is the blue light coming in super blue? If not, then that's a good aperture. Good. Step two, you add flash now. Start at a low power, and then get the desired look from that flash. Start with light number one and then get light number two. Once you get it to the point where it's not overpowering or it's not low so that you can't even notice it's there, you got it at the right setting that you like. One and two, meaning left and right, or right and left, you have those dialed in, good. The last step now is to get the right light on their face. How do you do that? Well, it's the same thing. You have a light to your right. Just set the power to the appropriate amount that's gonna light up their faces in the way that you want it to light up. So this is what I got and this is what I like. Enough power from the left, right, and from the front. So the video is coming to a close, uh, but before we close out the video, here's the money dance. The money dance can drag on for quite a bit, but you gotta get shots of everybody, or at least try to. So you can see the effects of the off-camera flash one and two. I keep going back to that because I do feel like the off-camera flash uh, powers and everything that photographers do or don't do, to me, if you don't do this, it's one, because you genuinely don't like that look, or most likely, at least in my mind, you think it's too difficult or it's too much work to set up. But I really feel like having this, uh, these lights uh, is going to make your subjects pop and it's going to look nicer. But that's just my taste. If you like that kind of thing, then you should hire me. 
but there's a lot of photographers out there that don't do that and they have amazing photos amazing I actually I actually don't know how I like them so much sometimes because I feel like the rim light is essential but they pull it off and that's their look and that's what they do similar to how some photographers will have all natural light or 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 they'll have a different kind of editing style where the colors look a little bit more washed out and muted and that's just their style but this is my style this is what you get from me the lighting that I use for venues the, the colors that you see I like natural colors although these colors are kind of uh, affected by like I said those stupid DJ lights look a little bluish there you could since I'm talking about the DJ's lights again, I'll say one last thing. You could counteract all the color that the DJ's lights give you. You could. But in doing so, you will close down your aperture so much that you won't even get to see the ambience of the evening. And you don't want to get rid of the ambient light. Not all of it, just some of it if those blue lights are so obnoxious. But you gotta get some of it because they paid for that. They wanted that. You just gotta minimize it so that their skin don't look like doesn't look like a their Smurfs. You know, <laughs> you want to control that a little bit. But overall, like I really love these pictures. I I actually really love the use of my off-camera flash during receptions. It's my favorite part of the day because the action is happening and I'm there to capture it all. And I love the way it looks. Of course, every part of the day is really fun for me, but you know, the evening part is when everybody cuts loose and has fun like this, see? Dancing, dancing, everybody's having a great time.